So did they want him to go like half naked? At a fall wedding too? <laughs> this escalates so quickly. <laughs> Basically, Bri tried to set up her maid of honor with a complete stranger and force her in a sleeping arrangement with him. Would you do it? Mm, depends. Depends on what the... <laughs> wow, I'm impressed. <laughs> Hey guys, it's V and you're tuned into Honey Hearts. Very excited. We got a bunch of really cool stories for you guys today. The tagline is petty or justified. So we're going to see perhaps some petty revenge. We're going to laugh a little bit. We're going to have some wholesome fun and maybe some chaotic heartbreak, but we will see. Now the stories we're reading come from the Reddit thread or sub thread, Wait, subreddit, subreddit, which is basically a group of stories that people on the internet post and usually ask the question of, am I in the wrong? Am I the jerk? Or am I the a-hole? So we're here to find out your verdict. Let's get into it. So our first one's a fun one, guys. First story is from the subreddit AITH. Am I the a-hole for marrying a man who proposed to me while I was on the toilet? You know, I think proposals, there are very many ways that you can be romantic about it. But I have yet to see a couple make a pro well romantic proposal while doing the business. I imagine immediately if someone's on the toilet, are they getting proposed to while pooping or peeing? I mean, there's only so many options, right? So let's see. Story reads, it's not as bad as it sounds. My friends are just obsessed with that part, I think. Fake names, my 32-year-old female fiance, Peter, 30-year-old male, had arranged a candlelight dinner in a hotel room. There were flowers, rose petals, and music. There was my favorite dinner and my favorite dessert. Peter was in a tuxedo. I was wearing a dress. That evening was so amazing. Oh, I mean, it's turning out pretty nice. I kind of am getting the vibes of a Taylor Swift love story vibes here. She's wearing a dress. He's wearing a tux. What could go wrong? Candlelit dinner. Now I'm very curious where the bathroom thing comes into play. OP says, while I was eating, my IBS started acting up. I ran to the bathroom. It was mortifying, but at least I was comfortable enough with Peter to allow him to come in. I was apologizing for ruining our evening while I was on the toilet. And he said, it's okay. I felt like he wanted to ask me to marry him the whole evening. I told him I love him. And he said, I love you too. I told him, I'm sure you'll take care of me in sickness and in health. That comment made Peter smile and he got down on one knee. I didn't care that this was the situation. I was so happy to say yes. I felt like he wouldn't have asked that evening if I didn't say the in sickness and in health comment. I told my best friend, Kate, 33 year old female and another friend, Bailey, 33 year old female. I told them the truth. Kate said it's weird, creepy and an a-hole move on his part. I explained that he likely would have put it off if I didn't mean the health comment. Kate said I was desperate and that I should have some respect for myself. Bailey said, if I thought Peter would ask another time, then I should have let him ask another time. Before talking to them, I thought I had the sweetest proposal story. Now I feel like an a-hole who caused my amazing fiance to have a terrible story. Am I the a-hole? Now, before we dive into the rest of the story, don't forget to like this episode and hit the subscribe button. Thanks guys. And hit the bell to be notified when next episodes come up. I appreciate you guys so much. Thanks. I mean, of all times for your IBS to act up, I'm sorry, OP. It sounds like everything was just falling into place. And then bam, the toilet was calling and you had to run. Literally. Hopefully you didn't have the literal runs as Peter was dropping on one knee. But I mean, I still think this is really cute. You guys had that romantic start. You're happy. Peter's happy. I don't see what the big problem is. Now, I think your friends are a little bit a hole here because come on, Kate and Bailey. Okay. So your friends, one of them is basically saying weird, creepy. I don't think it's weird and creepy. Now it would be weird if OP was not into it. If OP was like, ew, Peter, don't come in when I'm in the bathroom, please don't propose right now. Then that's different. Okay. And then Kate, the whole desperate phrase, I think that's a little harsh. Saying that OP is desperate and should have some self-respect. They're in love. They're fine with the proposal. I think the best proposal story is the one where the couple loves it. So I love, I don't know. I, I think this is kind of cute. Even with the whole 
pooing on the toilet proposal. What do you think? <laughs> hmm. <laughs> I think it's as long as the OP and his fiance are okay with it. I don't I don't see what the problem is. No. If- I know I, I know it's unusual. <laughs> At the same time, I think they might have had a romantic moment and romantic dinner leading up to it. Especially yeah. those comments, I think the OP's husband was OP's fiance now. Oh, fiance. Yeah. Oh, you're right. OP's fiance was probably gauging the situation. Yeah. I think well in a sense. I mean, yeah, <laughs> you might not think that's a that's the right situation to be proposing, but I'm thinking that they had a certain moment, and I think it felt right at that moment. It's a little bit unusual, but who am I to judge, right? Like, yeah, I think it it, it only worked. I think and Op said it too, because two things: one, Op allowed Peter to come to the bathroom while she was dealing with her IBS in the bathroom, and then two. She kind of made light of the situation. She was saying, oh, it seems like you're going to be there for me in sickness or in health. And he's literally there for her right now in sickness and in health, bathroom health. So I think it was just so perfect. I I mean, as romantic as you can envision a whole bathroom drop down the one knee, that was, I think, the moment for them, that magical moment. I think it's so cute. I do think the best friends are way out of line, though. I'm a little bit... I don't know. It's hard for me to see where they're coming from because it seems pretty harsh. Okay, taking back today you proposed to me. Say you're about to drop down on me and I told you, shoot, I I got to go to the bathroom. I got some business to take care of. Would you postpone the proposal or would you continue with it? I mean, I would like analyze the situation, right? Depending how you're feeling. If you are in distress, of course, I would not do it then. (laughs) <laughs> right i mean you have to i would have to postpone it yeah yeah i just have to gauge the situation i think it's it depends it, it depends on I, I think the couple you're right yeah it looks change i don't think there's such a thing as like the proposal day needs to be so perfect nothing goes wrong nothing nothing goes out of plan from like from minute one to the last hour it's just, hey, if something comes up, comes up. But if you've set your heart to propose to your partner and you think it's the right moment for you, then yeah, go for it. I think if I was in an OP situation, I would also say yes. I would say yes to that. I, I think it kind of makes for a very creative and romantic story. Very silly, very fun too. So OP does have an update. Oh, but before we jump to the update and context, let me read some of the comments. So first comment from no coach 9914 This is the cutest story. Your friends are actually just jealous because they don't have someone who loves them and will put up with their shit. He's an absolute keeper, OP. Congratulations on your engagement, not the a-hole. Mm, put up with their shit. <laughs> <laughs> I miss that. <laughs> Guys, get it? Shit, putting up with their shit. IBS, OP. That's pretty clever. I kind of wish that I, I came up with that one. But super cute. I agree. The cutest story ever. Um, another comment from Two Plastic Lobsters. A lot of women have very rigid ideas about what's romantic. Don't listen to them. I was once told by a female coworker that it was terrible that my boyfriend had gotten me a car battery for Christmas. It was what I asked for since I hate dealing with car stuff. He even installed it for me. After I explained this, she told me I was wrong to have wanted this. We never talked much after that. Your story sounds very sweet to me and your fiance sounds like the kind of guy who'll stick with you when things are shitty. Sorry, couldn't resist. (laughs) Mine stuck with me through cancer, by the way. That's way more important than a bunch of lacy hearts and flowers crap. Oh, I agree. And good for the commenter too. It seems like a lot of people are sharing their own stories and how they all have keepers. Oh, I love love. So I am just gushing and swooning for OP and the commenter. Although I do agree. I think some people, not just women, have very specific ideas of, oh no, like only this is romantic or this is the way to be romantic and everything else is too cheesy or not good enough or whatever. It is great. I think it's whatever the couple wants, whatever the partner or the lady, whoever wants, goes. No one else should have any other opinion on it except the couple in question. Like I know, for example, some people love the whole public proposals. 
I think for me, it would be a huge no. And I told Em that when he proposed or before, well, before we had the conversation, I told him, please don't. No public proposals, nothing like that. I'm more of an intimate gal. But some people love that whole kind of huge, I think like flash mob, dance style, even more public proposals. And that's cool too, to each their own. So there is an update from OP. So update and further context, the proposal happened on Saturday and I had been holding off telling my parents and Peter's parents. Both sets of parents live in a different state. Tonight, we told my parents first via video chat. My parents are Bob, 58-year-old male, and Susan, 58-year-old female. My mom is a massive fan of romance. Aw. And I knew she would ask about the proposal. Peter and I told my parents the whole proposal story. My mom was over the moon. She said proposing like that is better than any idea she had. My dad said it just proves the love Peter has for me. My mom asked if she can tell others, and I said sure. I'd asked my mom to be my maid of honor. After getting engaged, my pick for maid of honor was either going to be Kate or my mom. I didn't pick my mom despite Kate. I'm not punishing Kate. Kate's initial reaction to the proposal story would just make her being the maid of honor awkward. Plus, my mom is so happy with our union and she would love to plan a wedding. Then we told Peter's parents via video chat. His parents are Chuck, 55-year-old male, and Linda, 59-year-old female. His parents really appreciate the comedy. Chuck thanked us for giving them the gift of telling that amazing story, if we're comfortable with that. Linda said she's so happy for us. Peter told his father that he wants him to be the best man. Lastly, we told Peter's sister, Juliana, 27-year-old female via video chat as she lives in another state. She had her father's sense of humor. I hope Kate and Bailey will be bridesmaids. Yes, Kate and Bailey are single. I've been best friends with Kate since the ninth grade, so this little disagreement wouldn't ruin our friendship. Oh, I love this. So sounds like a pretty nice update. So both sides of the family love the proposal story and they even want to share it. Everyone's happy. All is good. Now I'm very curious on what's going to happen with Kate and Bailey, the best friends. I think it's rough to hear from someone you're so close with that you've known for years because what that's over decades of friendship and to hear them kind of rain on your parade and say, oh, your proposal is horrible or proposal story is bad. I think that's rough. I agree with OP's decision to pick her mom as maid of honor because really maid of honor is a huge deal and you want someone who's 100% on board with the relationship. So it would kind of be awkward if Kate was the maid of honor after what she said. So I see why OP did what she did. All right, now there is a further update from OP. For their update, Kate and Bailey both agreed to be bridesmaids when I asked via message. Kate apologized via message and she also sent me a video of her apologizing. Kate said she appreciates that I'm still letting her be a key part of the wedding. She said that after several days of thinking about the proposal, she realizes how loving it was. She said if she had IBS, she would appreciate a guy who treats her like how Peter treats me. Bailey apologized via message. Her apology was brief and she admitted in it that Kate told her to apologize. Oh, okay. I kind of like this update. Like, honestly, we get a lot of stories where, ah, friendship's over, break up. You know, like at least someone breaks up, someone's divorcing or someone uncovers some dark secret about someone else. And in this, I think it's a very wholesome beginning to our story reading today, guys. I mean, happy ending. The friends apologize. They acknowledge their mistake. I love it. And you know what? It takes a lot. Some people might have different opinions. So maybe with the original toilet proposal story, her reaction was just kind of knee jerk. Ew, cause shits are involved literally. But I'm glad that the best friends came around. It seems like Opie has a good group of family members and friends and she looks like she's gonna get to celebrate with all her loved ones. So very, very happy for you, Opie. Um, obvious. You are not an a-hole for marrying someone who's going to propose to you in the toilet. I don't think it says anything about your self-respect or your taste as a person. If anything, I think it says a lot about your love for Peter and your bond with him. So kudos to you. Definitely not the a-hole. What's your verdict? Same. Do you agree with OP still having Kate and Bailey be part of the bridal party after what they said? I think since they, uh, since they apologized, I think I, I would be okay with that. Yeah. I really appreciate that they 
apologize. I'm surprised. Usually we don't really get that sort of conflict resolution, some sort of, hey, all is good. This wasn't friendship earth shattering type of thing. So love that. All right. Oh, and I realize I don't really introduce M to you guys in the videos. He's usually, some of you guys have dubbed him Mr. Deep Voice, a uh, person behind the camera. So he's my fiance. And sometimes, you know, he's just enjoying listening in with us on the stories. All right, buckle up guys. Our second story is our wild pick. Now wild pick is basically just that, a story that stood out to me because it's a little bit chaotic, a little bit out of the usual. Well, I want to say out of the usual. We had some really crazy stories on here, but it stood out for a reason. And let's find out why. So this story is from the subreddit, am I the a-hole? Am I the a-hole for refusing to go to my friend's wedding at last minute if they don't change the groomsman outfit? Now, I don't know what your opinion is on uniform. That's what I kind of think of when I think bridal party outfits. They're kind of a uniform, right? They're a specific dress code you need to follow, sometimes down to an article of clothing, like a dress or a color or a top and bottom that you have to wear. My opinion is if you agree to be bridal party, that's kind of part of the responsibility of, hey, I want to be there for you on your special day. I don't care. Like, I don't care what I need to wear. I mean, as long as you're not making me buy like a thousand dollar or something really over budget and extreme, I'm pretty much okay with whatever my girlfriends pick as my outfit. I'm just like, yeah, sure. I'll wear whatever. I don't care what color. Just give me clothes, you know? So I'm very curious because my first gut instinct is leaning towards why does OP want to change his groomsman outfit? Let's get into it. OP says, I, 20-year-old male, got invited to be a groomsman in my close friend's 24-year-old male and 23-year-old female's wedding and was elated. My friends are both fashion designers, more artistic photo shoots than commercial. So they said they were going to design all of the outfits to suit the person wearing it and asked me if I'd be down. I said I'd absolutely love it and to feel free to do whatever. But I did say that in the context of capes or high boots. Also, on season me is a vain idiot who's far too comfortable with his looks. The summer passed and they talked about a few of the outfits, but we're keeping most of them secret until the fall. Cool. Friday, they finally sent out the info to make sure everyone knew what they were wearing. I love the design of mine, except for one detail. They didn't give me a shirt. <laughs> so, I, okay, immediate why when I heard OP talking about how his friends are fashion designers and they're more artistic rather than commercial. I think commercial, I think normal everyday clothing that you would see people wearing on the streets, right? Or in a, I don't know, Macy's catalog type of thing or in a Target commercial type of clothing, right? Now artistic, I immediately think of very avant-garde and like Kanye West is like, what was it? He had this walkway where people had like giant pillow suits or almost like in the Hunger Games when they have District 1 wearing all of these crazy colorful um, outfits. Like there's the dress that's on flames or on fire. Like really crazy things. So I'm hesitant because I know I told you guys I am team bride and groom. Whatever they want me to wear, put me in. But perhaps, let me dial it back and say, I am now switching teams to OP's side because they didn't give him a shirt. So did they want him to go like half naked at a fall wedding too? That's, that's bold. That's very bold. I don't know much about fashion or artistic photo shoots, but that is a statement. And I have to say, I don't really blame OP for not being so excited to be shirtless at a wedding. Now, M, it has been a groomsman at a wedding. If you were told that the outfit did not have a shirt, would you do it? Mm, depends. Depends on what the... Wow, <laughs> I'm impressed. <laughs> did not expect that from you. Depends on what the, I guess, <laughs> what do you call this? The ensemble? No, what outfit? the theme is, I guess. If it's, let's say, I don't know, like a beach wedding. Oh. Or something like that. You're wearing like a, I don't know, like a okay. Hawaiian shirt or something like that. No. But it's still a shirt. Right. Okay. Um, I don't know. It'd be, for me, it'd be a bit strange to wear 
no shirt at okay. all. I see it for beach wedding. Okay, I see see what you're saying with that. Now, so you're saying you would go, you're okay with going completely shirtless for a beach theme kind of like a summer hot, like wedding where everyone's kind of dressed similarly? If I, I think if I was singled out, yeah, I would probably not be okay with it. But oh, if, like you're the only one shirtless. Yeah, yeah. If everyone was doing it and everyone was okay with it, I think I would lean <laughs> more towards that. But at the same time, I am I have I'm having a hard time imagining where I would be shirtless in any of those. <laughs> and, so yeah. the wedding is in the fall. And based on what Opie's saying, I'm wondering, so he doesn't say yet. If he's the only one without a shirt or if all the groomsmen are just half naked. So OP says, so for context, I'm a photography and swimsuit model. People do take pictures of me shirtless a lot, but fall is my off season and I'm not in good condition right now. I don't think I'm overweight or anything, but I don't look good. And I would really like to wear clothes right now. I told them basically that, that this looked a little cool for a fall wedding and I wasn't in great shape to wear it. They said it'll be fine and I, I should just go for it and told me about how much work they had put into designing it. I told him again that I just don't feel all right wearing it. Reality doesn't work like stage photo shoots. My abs look awful, and since I'm the only one that doesn't have a real shirt at all, it feels uncomfortably sexual. They got kind of mad and said that if I was so flustered by my weight, I should go on a diet. I told them I'm not a stripper and hung up. Yeah, mature, I know. They did text me after to apologize for the diet comment, and I apologized for the stripper comment. Um, I'm sorry. I shouldn't be laughing, but this is so silly. I, in what context would you and your friends, your closest friends have to argue about whether or not you would be wearing a shirt? I'm just imagine Opie saying, dude, please give me a shirt. I don't want to be naked at your wedding. And the couple's like, no, we designed this with you in mind. Like, I wish OP attached the rest of an, the outfit. Like, I want to see, is he like wearing like full on combat boots and I don't know, super colorful pants and then like maybe a necklace or some jewelry or headpiece even and just no shirt. And how out of place is his outfit shirtless in comparison to everyone else? Now we know that he's confirmed that he's the only one without a shirt. <laughs> I'm just very curious on what their theme is. Definitely imagining very um, Hunger Games District 1 like extravagance, but high fashion type of uh, clothing. But I have to say, I'm still on OP side. There are moments where I, I think you can put your foot down to the bridal, to well, to bride and groom, and this is one of them. Oh, okay. Well, let's see. OP says, the other problem is that apparently they've designed the bridesmaids and the groomsmen's outfits in pairs. Viola is wearing something designed to be balanced with mine. I'm assuming Viola is one of the other bridesmaids. She gets a shirt, of course, but it was designed to go with mine and she's super into her outfit and seemed pretty upset when I said I was trying to get mine changed. I get throwing a shirt or a vest or a waistcoat or something will throw off the composition, but they've only got three weeks to plan and make it. But at this point, I just don't care. But Viola's awesome and looked genuinely deeply upset and she wasn't the one who decided to plan this. So I feel awful about how it'll affect her if I drop and refuse the outfit. I also know they've put a lot of work into this and probably aren't trying to be remotely creepy. So I don't know why I'm reacting this badly. I'm just hurt that they didn't care more about me than about their designs. But at the same time, I'm being irrational and those outfits definitely took months to plan and so help. Let me put this to rest. Opie, you are not the a-hole for wanting to wear a shirt at a wedding. I think, yes, there are times when it's bride and groom's way or the highway or no way. And this is, the one of the rare moments where it is not that it is not their way or the highway it should be your way because this is a just basic consideration thing i i don't think this is a normal ask for anyone even as a wedding guest or a friend to be hey can you be shirtless for our wedding it's very abnormal and what boggles my mind is so They've been designing this outfit. So bride and groom handmade these outfits, which also very cool. Kudos to you. Designer friends, very cool. But did at no point did it occur to bride and groom to ask OP and say, hey, so we were thinking that your outfit is a little bit out there. You're not going to have a shirt. Are you okay with it? 
Did that not pop up at all? Why wasn't it ever a question to bring up? I don't think people just casually ask people to be shirtless at their weddings. No? Or is this a new trend I'm not aware of? I think bride and groom are a little bit of an a-hole for pushing this on Topi. I know they apologize for the whole diet comment, but that sounds rough, especially when OP just told you, hey, I don't feel good right now physically. I'm just not at my best. And they're like, you know what? If you're not comfortable, go put a, go go on a diet before the wedding. That is rough. I also, I am down the whole composition thing and your artistic vision, Brian and groom, only because you're telling me someone wearing a shirt or a vest or something, a, a little article of covering to cover their chest area, I guess, would throw off the composition of your wedding. That seems a little extreme. I, I'm not an artist, but that seems a little bit out of place. So, so far I am leaning towards OP. I think there should be a compromise. Bride and groom have a responsibility to say, hey, we should have checked with you. Our bad for not giving you a heads up. We get it. Let's maybe try and pull something together. Worst comes to worst, if they really can't hand sew a shirt or a vest, how about just buying OP a shirt or letting OP wear something with bride and groom's approval of coloring or style so that it still matches with what everyone's wearing. How about that? That would be my compromise. I just can't imagine ever demanding any of my bridal party to be shirtless or to wear something that they're so, or not wear something and put them in such an uncomfortable position. See, maybe it's different because I'm a bridesmaid. I'm just imagining if any of my girlfriends said, Hey, I, I guess equivalent, female equivalent of being shirtless at a wedding is wearing a bikini top is in my mind kind of like that. I would just be like, girl, I love you, but why do you want me half naked at your day? You want people to look at you, not me or being odd, you know, it's just bizarre, but that's my verdict. But let's see the comments from K Howard, K Howard lots. Oh, that's an interesting username. Not they whole, there's a big difference between agreeing to wear some avant-garde or outside the box outfit and being half naked and uncomfortable or feeling sexualized. Regardless of what you do for a living, you have every right to not feel like you're on display. Yes, I agree. Just because the guy's a model does not mean he needs to be in working attire in a social event. From another comment from Tempting Penguin 369 Info, as an FIT grad, FIT grad? Oh man, this is one of those acronyms, right? FIT, let, let me take a guess at this. Fashion international training grad. Fashionista in training grad, FIT. I feel like that one's close. Do you know what that means? FIT grad nope. acronym? I think I'm close, you know, I'm gonna lock that in. Fashionista in training grad. I'm pretty sure that's what it means. You guys can correct me if I'm wrong. I'm curious how they made bespoke outfits for everyone without any fittings. So OP actually answers this one. OP says they took her measurements, but kept what they were making a secret. They're planning to do the fittings and adjustments over the next few weeks. They probably wouldn't have shown us until the wedding if they didn't have to do the fittings. This isn't exactly the ideal way to sew things in my experience, but they're miracle workers at last minute adjustments. So they might've been relying on that. I also think they were going for vibes more than perfect fit. Most of what they're making isn't very tight. Maybe I am looking at this with a lacking artistic eye because now with Opie's context, so the outfits aren't even fitted to the group bridal party. Bridal, wait, do you call them bridal party even if it's not just the bridesmaids? Is it still bridal party or groom groomsmen party? No, that doesn't sound right. Grooms party, bridal party, whatever it is. Grooms, groomsmaids, bridesmaids, Wait, oh, that's definitely not right. Anyways, the bridal party. Question about this. So none of the outfits are fitted to them and they're all boxy or looser outfits. How is this gonna work? I am questioning the aesthetics of this whole thing, but hey, not my, not my wedding, not my circus, not my crazy. So you do you, bride and groom. Uh, another comment from cultural section 862. Not the whole, you're a human, not a prop. You deserve to be fully clothed if you want. I agree. Give, I am team, give OP a shirt. Please let him have something. Or at the very least, I don't know. Do men have 
what is the equivalent of like crop top? Give them a crop top, a, a men's crop top if you need. There must be some workaround. You're telling me the couple is so artistic that they sew their own clothes and they cannot figure out an aesthetic workaround? OP, you get your clothes, you get your shirt. And that is my verdict, not the a-hole. What do you think? Is OP the a-hole for wanting a shirt? Absolutely not. Even though he said he would wear anything, I think being half naked is <laughs> does not does not mean you're still going to be okay with it. You see, he should have said, hey, I'm, I, he, he said, I will wear anything. He didn't say, I won't wear, like, I'm willing to wear nothing. I think there's a big difference. <laughs> All right. Our third story is from the subreddit, Am I the A-Hole? Oh, this one has a Halloween element, guys. Okay, I know. Some of you guys are saying, V, it's literally fall just started. It's still September. You know what? Shh, it's okay. October is already here among us, basically. We're, we're already in Halloween spooky season, all right? So there is some element of spooky season in this one, and that's why I chose it. The story uh, is from Am I the A-Hole? Am I the A-Hole for uninviting 25 family members to my wedding six weeks to showtime? Ooh, I'm loving this. I am feeling a bold move from OP. Let's see what they did to get uninvited. OP says, I've had this Halloween wedding planned for two years. The venue I wanted has a wait list. All of a sudden, my mom and grandma decided the wedding was satanic and want me to make last minute changes. <laughs> what? This escalates so quickly. We're like three sentences in. Okay. So OP has a Halloween wedding that she's planned for two years in the making, which is very cool. I'm like imagining kind of like a mix between Hogwarts or Tim Burton's like Nightmare Before Christmas s type of a uh, wedding. Like maybe with like spooky motifs and uh, floating candle vibes is what I'm getting. So, and then I guess OP's mom and grandma says that the wedding is satanic because of the Halloween elements. I, I, I just don't know what to say to this. I, okay. So let's say, let's see where OP's going with this. She says, I told my mom and grandma a firm, no, two years. My family has known about this. And because I have told them now half of my mom's side thought that they would be cute and say they aren't coming in a random ass power struggle. I told them fine and canceled everyone's invitations who complained or backed my mom or grandma on this. One of my sisters acted like she stepped out of bridesmaids duties. So I replaced her. It was about 25 people that decide to act stupid at less than the six week mark. So I sent out uninvited invitations and I sent out new QR codes for those attending. And the venue will only check in those to let the people in. Okay. I am loving it. I feel fire. I feel mm, a bold move. I'm surprised though. Okay, I get some people, some family members not being comfortable and maybe choosing not to chime in and saying anything, but to try and do some sort of peer pressure on OP and say, no, 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 we're on your mom and grandma's side. We are also not attending your wedding, even though it's a month and a half away, because your mom and grandma said that it's satanic. You're doing Halloween stuff. You know, I think OP saved herself a lot of trouble, a lot of pain, hopefully some money as well by cutting out those 25 people. They've made it known that they don't like what Opie's doing for the wedding. Honestly, I don't think it's that big of a deal. If the bride wants to have her Halloween moment, give it to her. If she wants to have a Tim Burton nightmare-ish Halloween spider webs, Harry Potter style wedding, I say give it to her. Have your Hogwarts magical moment. I think it's a little bit, if anything, I think mom and grandma are being a little bit like drama queens. I mean, what's satanic? Is it because, let me guess, maybe the bride's dress is black or something. And maybe she has some spooky music playing in the background. Like, <sighs> and of all things, you know what I think? The fact that they've known for two whole years because OP pro made it known, hey, I'm having Halloween party or Halloween, sorry, Halloween wedding planned. And they wait six weeks until before to all of a sudden 25 people collectively saying, I'm not going to stand on your mom and grandma's side. I'm not going because your wedding aesthetic is not my style. Really? I think this was planned. I think mom and grandma planned this to pressure Opie into changing things out last minute. That's what I think. Because they had all this time to say something about it and all of a sudden now it's a big problem. Now it's a big deal. 
I think it's a, it's a conspiracy. Now, Opie says, my aunt, who was one of the ones unvi- uninvited, told me people are allowed to disagree with me. And that doesn't mean I can pull an invitation from a wedding that they have made plans to attend. I told my aunt they had two years for complaints, but saying you're not going at six weeks before my wedding is BS and everyone effed around and found out. I will not be bullied by my family over this. (sighs) That's so satisfying to read. A round of applause for OP. Usually these posts I feel like will have 50 updates and like lots of tears and drama in between. And I think OP just spared herself six weeks of anguish and, you know, just bought herself time to relax before her wedding because she's not going to be fighting over the relatives. There's no back and forth. It's just, okay, you don't like my wedding. You don't have to come. Okay, bye. Bye. I love how the aunt had the audacity to say, "Mm, people can disagree with you, but that doesn't mean you can pull an invitation. Why not? It's her wedding, no? It's OP's wedding. I don't get it. So you can complain about a wedding that's not yours, that you're not paying for, that you're not contributing to in any way, shape or form, but OP can't decide which guests can attend. Make it make sense. Come on. See, I think you are allowed to have an opinion on it, even Mm -hmm. if you, let's say, don't agree. But if you're going to say, oh, I'm not going to attend it because it's, I don't know, Halloween theme or whatever. Yeah. Then I think at that point, I don't see the uninvite being off the table at that point. I mean, yeah, if, if someone just, you know, has some their opinions and they want to share it, I think that's okay. But once you go there, we're like, oh, I'm not going to attend that unless you change this. And then I think that's a, that, that's a different ballgame right there. Yeah, I think you, you start playing the game of chicken. Like, who's going to bow down first? Like, oh, we're not going to go if you do Halloween. Right. Okay, then don't. I, I think OP kind of pulled the rug out of them. I do think it's planned though. Because you're telling me 25 people yeah, out of the woodwork be. at the same time just go, ew, satanic wedding. We're not going. I would love to see their faces. I feel like they all had shocked Pikachu faces where they're like. <gasps> yeah. Uh, I just wonder what those satanic things are. <laughs> <laughs> kind of reminds me of the previous story you uh, covered, which is about Dungeons and Dragons and the... <laughs> roommates <laughs> roommates scaring the older couple oh my god you know what that's funny that you remind me of that story what if what if Opie's wedding was like um a mix of all these different elements you know how you go into like a Halloween store and they have like the <laughs> like the witch like the animatronics is that animatronics or like those like what is this you guys know what I'm saying like those not they're not statues, but they're large figurines that you plug in, and then they make noises when someone walks by, like <laughs> they're a witch, or like a scary skeleton moves around, something like that, right? I'm just imagining maybe Opie's wedding is like darkly lit, cathedral style, and she has like maybe like organ, like dramatic organ music playing in the background. She has a black dress, black wedding dress, very untraditional things. Um, maybe like a um, black lace, lots of elements like that. Maybe some crosses randomly, you know, decorated in places. And maybe that's where the satanic comments are. I would love to go to a Halloween themed wedding. Myself, I love Halloween, but I don't love it enough to plan a whole wedding around it. But I would love to attend. Now, OP, if you have some extra invites to throw my way, if you somehow come across a story and you are close to my area because I can't, you know, I don't have that many vacation days, so I can't really fly to you. But if you are close and you met, you know, you happen to come across this, please invite me. I'd love to go to a Halloween wedding. And if any of my girlfriends are listening to this and love Halloween enough, oh wait, we kind of have a Halloween wedding coming up. I almost forgot, not Halloween themed, but one of my girlfriends is getting married very soon, like right after Halloween. And her rehearsal dinner is actually on Halloween night. And she encouraged us to dress up for it. So lots of fun. Not Halloween themed, but close enough, I think. Like very cute. But I would love to go to a Halloween themed wedding. I think it would just be so fun. I imagine it would be like going to Hogwarts. But like wedding. Ugh. I love it. I love it, OP. You do you. I wish OP attached a photo of her dress or something of the decor. All right. First comment from Mystique. 
not the a-hole. They already said they're not coming. So why are they complaining now? I Obviously, I think they're bluffing, right? And OP called their bluff. They faffoed. I'm, I'm just sticking with it. Ever since I found out F-A-F-O is F to run and found out, guys, I'm calling it faffoed. It just sounds better. They faffoed. Another comment from where were the adults? Not they whole. Mom and grandma decide to intentionally blow up your wedding. Then they rally their little army to put pressure on you. I would wager a bet this isn't the first time you've had a run-in with them or with them trying to control your life. See, I'm not the only one. It's a conspiracy. 25 people, 25 guests don't just randomly up and decide at the same time that they hate your wedding aesthetic when they had two years notice. I love it. I love that OP did not bow down to it. So there are no updates on the story. But I am really hoping that OP sticks to her guns and doesn't bow down to the peer pressure. Oh, there is a comment that OP replies to. So someone asked from historical goal 3786, not the a-hole, sounds like a blast. Which bride are you dressing as? OP says a light blue corpse bride dress and then I'm going to have light blue hair. (gasps) Oh, I love it. I love it so much. Do you know who Corpse Bride is? No. Okay. Do you know who Tim Burton is? I don't. Oh, man. Do you remember the movie Nightmare Before Christmas? I don't. Da- dang it. <laughs> Honey, we watched this together. I don't remember. Uh, yeah. Okay. So let me flash it out for you real quick. So long story short, explanation is Tim Burton is a director dude. That's all I know. And he's known for a specific style of movies. Like I think he's done usually... I think he did like the Alice in Wonderland stuff. He did Nightmare Before Christmas. Like I'll, I'll show you a picture. Hmm. Real quick. I think you had a story about the uh, a guy that dressed as a corpse bride to the wedding. oh yeah 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 was that the one? Mm-hmm. Oh, okay, then I so, remember. Okay, I'm flashing an image. You'll you'll know you'll know the movie when I show you this picture. It's the I'm showing him the picture, um, the poster of Jack Skeleton from Nightmare Before Christmas. Well, I see this that. is Halloween. It, it, this is Halloween. Yeah, and I. You remember I've, that movie? Yeah, I've heard the song. That's all I. <laughs> that's, oh that's what I remember. That's okay. We're gonna watch the movie again this year. But like, you remember the style, like basically the art style, right? Yeah, yeah. So, Corpse Bride is from another one of his movies, and is very popular. It's basically the main couple. Well, Corpse Bride is the name of the movie, but the literal Corpse Bride is this character right here. Oh, okay. So Opie's going to wear a light blue dress and have light blue hair to have the same kind of aesthetic. <gasps> oh, I wonder if Opie is going to have, or Opie's fiance or to be husband, the groom, is going to wear like a light gray suit. Soup. I just said soup. Light gray suit, similar to the character. Wait, what's the main character's name? Now I'm forgetting. I think, is his name Corpse? His name is Corpse, right? No, it's probably not Corpse. I'm so off. But basically the main character, the male leads outfit. Oh, I am so excited for OP. I am gushing for you. Girl, stick to your guns. You got this. You're going to have an amazing wedding. A very iconic one too. Dressed as Corpse Bride. Oh, she's going to be so pretty. I'm so excited for her. All righty. Now our next story and our last story is from the subreddit, Am I the A-Hole? Am I the hill for ditching a wedding that I, female 20 years old, was the maid of honor in because the bride, female 22 years old, tried to set me up with the best man, male 28 years old? <sighs> we have a lot of situations where I feel like bride and groom usually get pissed that other people are trying to prioritize their relationships or trying to steal their thunder. But in this one, based on the title, I am feeling like perhaps we have a case of nosy, and doing too much activities from bride and groom. But let's see. OP says, I was supposed to be the maid of honor at a wedding a few weeks ago. I ended up just leaving and going home to my boyfriend of six years after the bride and groom tried to set me up with the best man. Did bride and groom not know that OP has a boyfriend of six years when they tried to set her up? And she's a maid of honor, so it doesn't mean they're like BFFs? What? Okay, um, let's see. OP says, 
When my friend got engaged last year, I was excited for her and even more excited when she asked me to be the maid of honor. As invites went out though, she asked me to not bring my boyfriend to the wedding. I was really upset about that, but my boyfriend talked me down, telling me that weddings were expensive and they were probably trying to keep the guest list down and they didn't really know him, so it would be fine for me to go without him. That made sense to me, so I didn't say or do anything after that and just continued with helping as I could as the maid of honor. Oh my gosh. We got another conspiracy. Wait, 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 wait. This is not, this is like blaring red alarms to me. So your bestie asks you to be maid of honor, but says, hey, I want you to be there, but I don't want your boyfriend there who you've been dating for six years. I get it. They've only known each other for six days, six weeks, six months even, but dude has been around there for a while. He is a long-term fixture in your BFF's life, in your maid of honor's life, and you say explicitly, don't invite him? Is this normal? I'm not saying that you have to invite your maid of honor significant other, but this is kind of an unusual case. So let's see. Opie says, nothing else really concerning happened again until a couple days before the wedding. The bride asked me to give the best man a ride to and from the wedding, which was about a four hours drive. I thought it was just part of it as he was a veteran and had his own issues surrounding that. So I gave him a ride up to the Airbnb that we were staying at before the wedding. The whole time he tried to make conversation that was just weird to me and I was just not into it and just trying my best to be nice to him. At the Airbnb with everyone, I immediately noticed things were off. All the other bridesmaids had their boyfriends there and things were really awkward when I found out I was in a room with the best man. I am uncomfy. This is weird. Um, okay. I, I thought the story was headed something like maybe bride and groom take OP maid of honor side and say, hey, girl, you see best man. He's a good guy. You should get to know him. And maybe they thought OP was somehow single. That's different. But you're telling me... there. There's too much pre-planning. So they want they wanted her to drive and give him a four-hour drive, first of all. So they wanted her to be a personal Uber for the best man, which is like, okay. And then they put them in the same room to sleep. I would not feel safe in this environment. I would feel so violated. It's just uncomfortable. If my best friend did this to me, that's sabotage. It's like, do you not respect me? Do you not respect my relationship? What do you think is going on? Where has your brain been the last six years of our friendship? Because how do you not know that I have a long-term boyfriend? So many questions. Now, if you showed up to your friends, like, I don't, bridal suite, no, maybe not bridal suite, but your friends, like Airbnb for the bridal party, like everyone has a room there and you show up, You already know I'm not invited for whatever reason and we're chill with that somehow. But you go in and they're like, hey, you're rooming with maid of honor, another chick. What's what's your first like reaction? What what's going on in your head? Heck no. (laughs) I mean, (laughs) uh, I can laugh now, but I would feel I would feel betrayed. Right. I would think it's some kind of joke because I don't I don't see my friends doing that. I would think I'm getting punked. Like, oh, where's the camera, guys? Like, what's going on? Also, I'm surprised. Usually people complain about other couples stealing their thunder. Why is bride and groom? My biggest question is, why does bride and groom so into putting their maid of honor and groomsmen together? Like, is this some weirdness where they're like, no, we know what's best. Like, I know what's best for my best friend. She should dump her boyfriend of six years and just go straight to cheating with this guy. Like, I have so many questions about this. Okay. Let's see if we get any clarity. Um, OP says, the next day before the rehearsal dinner, the bride and groom cornered me in a room to say that the best man was an incredible guy and that I was blowing him off without really giving him a chance. I told him, well, of course not. I have a serious long-term boyfriend, which y'all specifically told me not to bring. Then the bride cut in and told me, well, that really isn't that serious since he hasn't proposed in so long. Excuse me? Oh, 
the disrespect is so loud here. The way they just casually jumped over that hoop and said, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You have a boyfriend that six years, that's nothing. He, he, he didn't put a ring on it. So not serious. It's fine. Go date him instead. Go date this other dude. I'm introducing you instead. Yeah, for me, that comment right there would have solidified <laughs> the end of the friendship there. Oh, you think it's friendship breaking worthy? Absolutely. At that comment itself. like Yeah. Uh, like, because beyond the whole disrespect to the relationship, I just feel like they just don't respect OP's opinion or what she's saying. Like, they're just, yeah. they're, they're hearing, they're not listening. It's like in one ear, out the same dang ear. It's like, what? You're saying, nope, nope. That's not what you think. I know what's best for you. I know what you truly feel. It just, it kind of feels like they're like talking to her like she's a child. Almost like, no, 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 no. You don't know what you're talking about. The six years, oh, that's nothing. This is serious. That's not. So weird. I think I would bow out of the wedding, to be honest. I know, made of honor. I know it's like crunch time. It's rehearsal dinner time. But I would feel so disrespected that I would say, hey, I'm sorry. I don't think I can be your maid of honor for the wedding. Like this is just, I don't know if I can be there for your wedding, for your day, because you are making it very clear that you are not respecting me or my relationship. I think I would step out. I think kind of a off topic, maybe comment. A lot of these stories have, I guess, long-term friendships. And then when the wedding happens, all of these weird things oh, come out. Like, yeah. I just wonder why, why is that? You know what it is? I think when you're close with someone, you tend to ignore the little things. If someone acts a little off in one instance, like if it's somewhat minor, it's nothing earth shattering, you can kind of ignore and you move on. You give people benefit of the doubt. I think that's part of it too. Or you say, oh, well, we've been friends for so long. And then for whatever reason, I think sometimes it, bring, it comes out like the ugliness comes out in weddings or important moments is because all of a sudden people feel more entitled for things because it's a wedding or they feel like they have a right to things that they really don't have a right to like budding into someone's friendship, like, or, or sorry, someone's relationship. It just feels like it's an excuse, like an all, encompass all encompassing umbrella of I am bride and groom. I am king bride and queen groom. And you will now bow down and listen to me. That's what it feels like. Cause I think it's easier to say no, like in a regular friendship, if someone's like, Hey, break up with your boyfriend. It's not that serious. You're like, what? Shut up. Bye. But when it's your bride and groom saying it and they're cornering you and they're pressuring you and they're like, they're putting you a root in a room with them. They're creating all these opportunities and they're like, yeah, he's great. Go for it. Go for it. It almost feels like they're trying to like slowly pressure her in slowly, but surely she will fall under the spell. I think that's why. I don't know. That's my theory. That's my theory. I don't know what you guys think, but that's my theory on why like wedding day is all of a sudden like the, like the golden, like get out of jail free card, like the free pass to bring up whatever you want, to make whatever crazy demands you want. Maybe it could be a complete other reason too. You guys will need to comment and let us know. And if you have your own crazy bridal party or bride and groom or wedding stories, like please share. I love hearing wedding stories and I know you guys enjoy it too. Uh, so continuing with OP, OP says, then the bride cut in and told me, well, that really isn't that serious since he hasn't proposed in so long. I argued back that that was because we were both still in school. We continued arguing for a little while before I finally just said, forget it. I'm going home. I got called all sorts of awful names going out of the room and packed up and left. Two things. One, good on you, OP, for leaving. You don't have to stand there and take that. That just enough is enough. I think you tolerated enough craziness and disrespect. But also the second thing, this is such a weird thing to bring up. I just realized OP is 20 years old. So she's been dating her boyfriend for six years since they were 14. It is not that abnormal to not be married in this day and age at age 20. And also I don't think, okay, maybe this might be a hot take. I don't think there's such a thing as someone took too long to propose unless someone in the couple or the relationship was dying to be proposed to and they've made it clear, I want to be, propo be proposed to by this date and it hasn't happened. That's the only scenario where I feel like, all right, it's been too long, cut your loss, move on. 
But if neither side in the relationship is in a hurry to get married, then I think the timing is just right because there is no such thing as the perfect timing. I know some people are saying, oh my God, 10 years and no ring, five years and no ring, three years and no ring. There's no, the, the only time when there needs to be a ring is when it's the right time for you. So Opie, your best friend's a weirdo. I don't even think she's your friend at this point. She has some weird other agenda going on. I don't know what veteran, this veteran bridesman, oh, bridesman, uh, groomsman, groomsman has on bride and groom, whatever situation he's going through. But at this point, it doesn't even sound like he's such a catch. It almost sounds like they just want to play dolls. Like they want to play house. Like they want to say, oh, maid of honor would look so good with best man. And that it just looks like bride and groom are trying to play house. Very weird. So Opie says, I got a lot of calls on the way home, which I ignored until my boyfriend called. Apparently the bride called him and told him I just left for no reason. And he called to check in on me. I told him everything that happened and he was kind of dumbstruck by it all as I would be. Anyways, after the wedding, I've had the bride, the groom, and a lot of the friends call or message me, tell me how horrible of a person I was for just for leaving the night before the wedding for no reason. None of which were receptive to my side of the things, and it's starting to worry me that maybe I overreacted by just leaving like that. Anyway, am I the a-hole? No. It just no. I I am genuinely concerned for you, OP. It's not just bride and groom that aren't your real friends for, that you're learning, but none of the other friends that are so-called calling you and calling you names and saying that you're in the wrong. They're not your friends either because hearing your side of the story and they're not receptive. They just don't. They just say, oh, no matter what happened, you should have been there. That's BS. Mm. Okay, cut them all off. Bride and groom aren't your friends. Um, the other people, your so-called other friends are calling you and saying, oh, you're in the wrong. They're not your real friends either. Real friends will respect your six-year relationship or even your three-month or two-day or whatever it is relationship. Who on earth is encouraging you to be a cheating partner? What? This is weird. So bizarre. And you know what? I hope that you, you know what? Save some money while you're at it. Don't send it. I wouldn't even send a wedding gift. You may have bailed out, but that's because bride and groom bailed out on your friendship first. So... I'd say you save yourself some time, some energy, and lots of future headaches. So uh, Opie does have a quick edit. Edit, I started dating my boyfriend in high school. He's two years older than me. My friends don't really know my boyfriend since he doesn't go to the same school as us. And when we do see each other, it's usually halfway between our schools. Okay. So they're a little bit long distance, like a pseudo long distance, I guess. Even then... Your friend knows that you've been dating somebody. He exists. So doesn't really justify anything to me just because they don't really hang out. First comment from Quiet Salary 7850 Quote, all of the other bridesmaids had their boyfriends there and things were really awkward when I found out I was in a room with the best man. They had you sharing a room with a stranger? You were supposed to sleep there, shower there, get dressed there? Is the best man the groom's best friend? Did they have fantasies of you marrying him, buying a home next door to them, and raising your children together? Not the a-hole. You know what? This is a good point because I kind of forgot about this. But regardless of whether or not OP single, right? Without telling her, she, her best friend assigned her a room with a complete stranger? A random dude? Oh, no. Oh, no, 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 Nope, nope, nope. That's a no for me. But see, they had the whole two hours to get to know each other on that ride. Oh, yes. Forget the six-year relationship, right? Like two two hours is enough to make the magic happen. You know, I will say something about the matchmaking abilities, okay? I may not be an expert in matchmaking, but my goodness, Brad and Grim, you guys suck. A two-hour car ride and forcing someone to be in a freaking, in a sleeping shower slash bedroom with somebody they don't know, that is not how you match make someone. What happened to the good old fashion? Hey, girl, there's some guy. He's really cool. Do you want to have a lunch date with him? 
Yes. Okay, great. And then they show up to a mutually agreed upon lunch date where they can eat and then leave at a certain time that is normal for a first meeting. No, 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 no. Two hour or four hour on trip. So they made her work for it, first of all. So they made her become an Uber for the guy. And then they had her like hold into a room with him. Okay. Also, I had a question. Where did Opie sleep? She kind of didn't answer that question. So I'm kind of curious. Like, I'm not judging Opie. I'm just curious. Like, what ended up happening? Did you have to sleep in someone else's room? Did you, because everyone else was a couple. Like, everyone else is there with their couples. Did you end up sharing a room with someone else, another couple? Did you sleep in the living room? Did you kick the guy out? Did you give him the room and, you know, just go somewhere else? Like, I kind of need an update in that situation. I actually drove back that same night. Oh, you're right. You're right. Okay, so that's the same night then that she just left. Right? No, 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 no. Because she says, look, timeline is she went to the Airbnb. She drove the best man up to Airbnb. She found out the room situation, freaked out. And then next day, she says, next day before the rehearsal dinner, bride and groom cornered her to give her the whole, hey, you should date the guy. Oh, you're right. So I'm wondering, Opie doesn't really say, Opie, where did you sleep? I hope she didn't have to sleep on the floor or something. That'd be pretty sad. Another comment from Dina Felice. I'm I'm dying a little bit because I don't know why some of the comments in Reddit, sometimes there's like a little tagline, like a title. The person earns a title or something. And this person's title uh, for the Reddit user is judge, jury, and excretioner. Instead of executioner is excretioner. Um, how are these tags assigned, guys? Um, very funny. So commenter says, quote, no reason. I'm sorry to say whoever you heard that from lied to you. The reason I left is that the bride attempted to force me to share a room with a man other than my boyfriend, repeatedly insulted me and my relationship and made me feel generally unsafe and disrespected. I was so devastated. I thought she asked me to be her maid of honor because she thought of me as a close friend. But now it seems like she only did it to attempt to force me into a sexual relationship with a practical stranger. Unquote. Ah, you know, I, I like that sometimes the comments will draft out a whole response for OP to kind of pull out at the ready when someone tries to like force them into a narrative. I like this. OP, use this phrase. Use this. This explanation is perfect. Chef's kiss. Commenter continues, not they whole. The bride literally doesn't care about your feelings. So you really weren't her maid of honor, just the prop she was using to further some other goal. Without knowing more about the situation, I can't be sure whether it was because she was prioritizing the best man over you or whether it's because she genuinely believes your boyfriend is bad for you and therefore was just trying to replace him with anyone else. But either way, that is a completely unacceptable way to treat another person. Her behavior would have been appalling if you had been a stranger. The a the a hole ishness is off the charts since she was supposedly your friend. And anyone who can't see that either doesn't know the whole story or is or is proving themselves to be an a hole as well. I agree. You know what? I I would almost. I know. I know. Usually, some people say. Don't air out the dirty laundry online. Be mature. Take the high road. Settle things behind closed doors. No. Since best friend is now airing it out, I think it's fair game. Clear your name, OP. You know, do that thing where I think we saw in one of our last episode stories. Get yourself some public justice. If maid is, or not maid, ooh. If bride is trying to make you into the scapegoat, make you into the bad guy. You know what? Post a picture of you and your boyfriend and a, you know, cute picture of you guys and say, hey guys, this is me and my boyfriend and this is really why I didn't attend the wedding. And then, you know, just copy paste the snippet from the commenter. Get yourself some public justice. I would even tag the the entire, you know, uh, bridal party while you're at it, to be honest. So let's see if there's an update to this. Oof. I'm hoping we find out a reason because it seems very weird that bride and groom would make this kind of their ultimate agenda. Another comment from you must be, you must be joking, not the a-hole. To be honest, that bride sounds like she was setting you up to cheat on your boyfriend or be sexually assaulted in your room at most. It's freaking unbelievable. And she lost all loyalty from you when she actively tried to F up your life. Knowing she was wrong, she tried to tell everyone that you just left for no reason tactic of all guilty people to control the crowd and pressure you to apologize please tell me your boyfriend does support you in in this decision don't worry about 
what these jerk friends are saying to you because one, they are jerks, and two, who wants friends that do this or think what they did was okay? So Opie does respond. My boyfriend has told me that I didn't do anything wrong and he's glad I made the decision I did. It's just all the other people who don't know what happened contacting me that are making me feel like I messed up. Opie, I'm agreeing with some of these comments. You need to call these people out. These comments are... I think these comments are giving you real friendship advice rather than your own friends who are criticizing you. You made the right decision. Stick by it. So creepy. Basically, Bri tried to set up her maid of honor with a complete stranger and force her in a sleeping arrangement with him. Ugh. I, I'm getting massive X. OP, I am very glad that you made your decision and you left because who knows what would have happened if, say, at the wedding, there's drinks involved and things like that. I don't know that I would trust that the bride has your back if she keeps trying to put you in these uncomfortable positions and situations with a complete stranger that you're clearly not down for or comfortable with. Not they whole. And I agree with Reddit's verdict. What do you think? Oh, definitely not they whole. It's weird, right? I don't, I don't understand what the motive could have been for Bride to do this to her friend. Unless she secretly hated OP. Very weird. Bizarre. I'm left with more questions than answers here. If you guys do see an update, I don't see one yet posted by OP. But if you do see one, let me know. Because I am very curious about if we ever find out what the real motive was. Very weird. Overall, I hope you guys enjoyed these stories. All of them had some sort of element of a crazy plot twist, I would say. I think we start out wholesome and then we got more chaotic along the journey, but that's fine. I hope you guys enjoyed this one. And I hope some of the stories even made you laugh a little bit. And if you did, don't forget to like this video and hit subscribe. If you're listening to me on Spotify, please rate me five stars. And I'll see you guys in the next episode. Bye. <laughs>